Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Marwa and today we'll be talking about the Davenport diagram. In the exam, they can give you a schematic diagram like this where they can just put up some random markings and then ask you to uh, mark it whether this is going to be metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis or a respiratory or a metabolic alkalosis. So in the subsequent slides, I'll try to explain the logic behind this particular flow diagram and then we're going to hand draw this. So first and foremost, I would suggest you to rather do this activity with me. That is on the x-axis, you can plot the pH, which is starting from 6.9 and going up to approximately, uh, I would say a value of 7.9. Uh, any values in excess of this would be, I would say, uh, not compatible with life. Anything less than seven is anyway gonna be a big problem, but considering that in physiology books, the range given is from 6.9 to 7.9, Though I repeat the fact, uh, usually in clinical practice between 7 to 7.7 .7 is the max values that we usually see. Now you know the fact that the pH is in a range of 7.35 to 7.45, so I'm just taking an average of 7.4. And uh, on the y-axis, you are supposed to put up the bicarb values. Uh, the range is about 22 to 26 milliequivalent, so we can take 24 as an average here. And I'm starting from 4 and then I'm putting up the values in increments of 4. So it's like 4, 8, 12, 16, so on, going up to 60. Now, I'm incorporating the third dimension in this case. These that I'm drawing before you are referred in the physiology books as isobars. These isobars are going to be representing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The average value of carbon dioxide is about uh, 35 to 45. So we can take a value of 40. And uh, just for representational purposes, I'll be giving you scenarios where uh, the PCO2 of the patient can rise dramatically. Like in case a patient is having a respiratory acidosis, uh, especially carbon dioxide retention due to COPD, the values can be as high as going up to about uh, 80 millimeters of mercury. Though I said the average values would be something in the range of 35 to 45. Now, once you get this right, the first scenario that I'm creating before you is of a patient of impending respiratory failure. Uh, there can be two scenarios I can give you here simultaneously. Let us assume somebody had COVID and then is having uh, guillain barre syndrome subsequently. Or for that matter of fact, due to COVID itself, is he's going into respiratory failure. Or the standard must-know example of impending respiratory failure would be a patient of uh, status asthmaticus. You see, once he deteriorates, I mean, uh, he would require ventilatory support. Now, if that is not available, then the carbon dioxide in the body of this patient will dramatically rise. So for representational purposes, I have just here shown a patient whose carbon dioxide values are going up to 80 millimeters of mercury. I agree, it's very high, but then at the same time, this is just for representational purposes. And when carbon dioxide is going to be that high, then you can very well see that the pH of the patient, as you can see from this graph, would definitely be falling. And once the carbon dioxide is contributing to acidosis, how is the body going to neutralize this acidosis? The body will neutralize this acidosis by actually, uh, you see, increasing the value of bicarbonate. I repeat the fact once again, because there are protons being generated, what will you require? Bicarb. So the body will start increasing the value of bicarbonate in this case. So you can very well see the reason why in this particular diagram, why is respiratory acidosis marked in this particular quadrant? You can very well see carbon dioxide is spiking king as a result of which the compensatory mechanism is kicking in and it is causing an increase in the value of the bicarbonate so where these three things are meeting that's going to be a respiratory acidosis the diametrically opposite scenario of this is respiratory alkalosis but instead of just telling you that it is diametrically opposite we can have a situation here of a case of let me say a mild to moderate presentation of COVID-19 pneumonia now, most of these patients, when they progress from mild to moderate, you see hospital beds were in short supply. So you were giving heparin at home, you were giving supplemental oxygen at home for these patients. And because they're hyperventilating, so there will be a carbon dioxide washout from the body. So if you look at the isobar that I've created here, the isobar at the moment is showing a PCO2 of 20 millimeters of mercury. I agree dramatically very low, but just for representation purposes, if carbon dioxide is going to be that low, then uh, the person will start having alkalosis. The pH of this patient will start moving towards right. You very well have seen the scenario of respiratory acidosis. Now you can see respiratory alkalosis coming up. And what will the body do in response to this? Well, the body will try to decrease the value of the bicarbonate in this particular case. So the kidneys will start losing the bicarbonate. 
So once the bicarbonate will fall, so you can see bicarbonate is falling. That's what I've represented here. Carbon dioxide is definitely on the lower side for these patients. So this particular quadrant represents respiratory alkalosis. So two things very clear before you, how uh, and why respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis are present in the stems that I've highlighted. Now let's take up another scenario. It could be the same patient of COVID-19 pneumonia. Lots of them go into fungal sepsis. A lot of them go into septic shock or it could be a traditional diabetic ketoacidosis. Once the ketones are produced or for that matter of fact, let's say uh, lactic acid is being produced with respect to a person who's deteriorating because in septic shock, the perfusion of tissues will be lesser. So whether you take up the scenario of beta hydroxybutyrate being produced or you take up a scenario of lactic acidosis, ultimately the bicarbonate values will be dramatically very low. And the moment the bicarbonate values will be low, the pH of this patient might be so less that it may not be compatible with life. So you can very well see the fact that why metabolic acidosis is falling in this particular quadrant. You can see that the pH is lesser, the bicarbonate values are lesser. And now what will the patient do? The patient will hyperventilate. Because why? The hyperventilation will be a survival mechanism for these patients. So small breathing is a survival mechanism for these patients because when you wash out the carbon dioxide, the pH will tend to come towards normal. That is what the body is trying to do. Ultimately, pH is falling. We, it's, it's, it's like a tug of war, right? You lose two steps and then you gain back the two steps. That's what the body is trying to do in this particular case. So what I have highlighted before you is uh, if you can take, uh, let me say in the middle, this is the pH of the patient, 7.4. You move towards left, you have acidosis. You are moving towards right, you have alkalosis. But the parameters to be remembered, respiratory acidosis, why? Because carbon dioxide values were spiking. I highlighted that with the isobars. In metabolic acidosis, the bicarbonate values are lesser. At this junction, I would also like to remind you regarding the basic rules that I've explained to you whenever you have to find out the primary problem in the patient. These may be given in any order, but always, always first look at the pH, then look at the PCO2, then look at the bicarbonate. That's the standard rule. I want to repeat once again. And if the direction of arrows, that is pH is less, PCO2 is elevated. So direction of arrows is opposite. It's always a respiratory problem. And when there's a respiratory problem, because there's an acidosis, there's a protons being generated, the body will try to increase the value of bicarbonate. So therefore, this particular rule, how was it deduced? It was deduced from this particular diagram itself, that is the Davenport diagram. So sometimes we might use the word Sigurd Anderson normogram from which this was derived, or we can just use the word Davenport diagram per se. But I've just uh, made you remember once again, this respiratory acidosis per se, how was it deduced from this particular diagram? Now, in case the pH and PCO2 are going opposite once again, then once the arrows go opposite, it's a respiratory etiology. And in respiratory etiology, you don't need to even look at the bicarbonate. Obviously, the bicarbonate values will begin to fall as I've highlighted to you. But uh, every time you have a respiratory problem, you don't need to bother yourself per se by looking at the bicarb values in a sense that the pH would be the determining factor. Bicarbonate, if it is rising or falling, is the compensatory mechanism that's kicking in. I mean, the kidneys would be acting like big brothers and would be helping the patient. In contrast, when you look at metabolic acidosis per se, now cast a glance at the yellow part of this particular line diagram. In metabolic acidosis, the arrows are going in the same direction. The pH is lesser, the PCO2 is lesser because of the hyperventilation. Remember, small breathing is going to kick out carbon dioxide and the bicarb values are going to be lesser. And the opposite scenario of this would be metabolic alkalosis where all the arrows are going in the same direction. So these are basic rules that you are aware of and these rules have been derived from this particular diagram itself. Now, once you get this orientation right, what we are going to do here is a baseline practice of this representation. So this circle represents normal. And then you can take this as, as if I'm drawing a table fan before you. So one of the wings that I have represented at the moment, right? The two arms of, uh, I would say the table fan that I'm drawing before you. This particular part is uh, metabolic acidosis. That was the initial quadrant that I'd shown even in the previous diagram. The diametrically opposite aspect of this would be a metabolic alkalosis. I mean, uh, this could be secondary to vomiting in a patient or any condition where aldosterone values are spiking. Let me now draw another, uh, I would say, wing to this particular diagram per se. The segment that I'm highlighting at the moment is respiratory acidosis. 
the diametrically opposite scenario of this would be a respiratory alkalosis so first and the foremost in this table fan you need to get these basic orientation right and it's very simple in a sense that uh, the pH is 7.4 so you move towards left it is acidosis all you need to get is the orientation right for respiratory acidosis and a metabolic acidosis and I explained the reasons with respect to why in respiratory acidosis the representation is there is because the isobar for carbon dioxide was present in that particular segment per se now comes a important part of this discussion so i want you to be more vigilant at the moment when i'm highlighting these facts please remember that the next two particular wings that i'll draw before you are the ones which can usually be asked in the exam i'm just gonna draw them before you and then i'm gonna mark it and explain what i or the reason why i'm going into this this segment per se is again going to be a respiratory acidosis area only but uh, why i have I drawn it separately is to highlight that there are two separate things that i'm saying at the moment one could be acute respiratory acidosis second could be a chronic respiratory acidosis now in chronic respiratory acidosis why have i drawn it separately it will become more obvious to you uh, when i show you the actual diagram where where this would have a better I would say representation with respect to the graphical interpretation you see let me just draw a baseline in this particular case that I'm drawing in color black whenever it's gonna be a chronic process there is gonna be more time available for compensation if there's gonna be more time available for compensation the bicarbonate will be able to rise relatively more so I'm using two different colors just to highlight the fact that in red I have represented acute respiratory acidosis the point of mine is in acute respiratory acidosis because time is lesser as a result of it the bicarb may not be able to rise to a substantially high level but in chronic respiratory acidosis because you are having the luxury of time the values will be relatively much much higher so what they are simply doing in the exam is that they're putting markings like these right so the point that you need to understand is that nobody will mess up with metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis that's pretty straightforward most of the time there's a high possibility that in the exam you can mess up between point number b that i'm going to zoom in versus point number c so how are you going to analyze it in the exam because obviously there's a pressure situation coming up first and foremost you just need to see that uh, the marking that is given to you whether it is going to be you know towards the left of i would say 7.4 or towards the extreme right of 7.4 uh, this is the normal area as i've highlighted so this is the b and the c areas are towards the left so definitely acidosis is coming up the next thing you all need to do is just look at this horizontally and look at the bicarb values which are given you can see bicarb values about 40 which is dramatically high i told you normal values about 22 to 26 you can take an average of 24 here it's 40 it's substantially high so you would say this is a chronic process but on the graphical representation you can see that uh, when it comes to acute respiratory acidosis because substantial time has not passed at the moment so the values are something in the range of about 26 to 28 as is highlighted in this case once you get this stem of b and c right then uh, we move on to the subsequent part of this diagram that is acute respiratory alkalosis and chronic respiratory alkalosis again what is the differentiating factor i would just want to highlight that in acute respiratory in fact i'll try to use the same colors for similarity in acute respiratory alkalosis the fall in the magnitude of bicarbonate will be lesser as compared to the fall that you can see for a chronic respiratory alkalosis you can very well see the two colors that i've highlighted the black one is for chronic the the red one is for the acute process you can see the magnitude of fall of bicarb is much much higher in a chronic respiratory alkalosis so you definitely can pick up these parameters uh, if they're given to you in the diagram and that is what they have done primarily so if you get the orientation for this diagram right i mean you are bang on space or bang on i would say to get this question right all you need to do is hand draw this by yourself so that you are able to i would say perform relatively better now a quick input here uh, important causes of metabolic acidosis that can obviously be asked is cult which is for uh, uh, as i've highlighted a high anion gap metabolic acidosis or they can definitely put up uh, even uh, dr fuse uh, the mnemonic explanation or details i'm not going into at the moment because they're present in the app you've already gone through but uh, all the scenarios of hagman nagma that we have discussed would be basically following uh, in this particular segment of this schematic diagram 
on the other hand when would you be having a acute respiratory acidosis when the carbon dioxide value will suddenly spike up so one of the scenarios of a acute respiratory acidosis could be a neurological illness like gullian barre syndrome transverse myelitis where there would be a diaphragmatic uh, failure in a patient and therefore the carbon dioxide values will begin to rise and obviously the standard presentation of mean of acute respiratory acidosis could also be a patient of asthma who's deteriorating into status asthmaticus now we do not use the word status asthmaticus anymore so i'll I'll obviously not mention that in the written format I just verbally used it but severe acute asthma is where you could be having a carbon dioxide value spiking and the person could be going into impending respiratory failure on the other hand who's a patient who's having chronic respiratory acidosis than a COPD patient COPD patients that come to you in your hospital on a regular follow-up could definitely be having a value of bicarb going up to 40 and the CO2 values going up to as much as 80 millimeters of mercury looks dramatic but definitely true what are the scenarios that will contribute to metabolic alkalosis? Well, I explained anybody with chronic vomiting would be put up in this particular stem or quadrant. And at the same time, any person having hyperaldosteronism, that could be like ascites, it could be a person who's having, let me say, con syndrome, he can put up endocrine causes also, would be falling in this particular area. Now, let's look at scenarios of acute respiratory alkalosis. Uh, the best one I can give you at the moment is a patient of COVID-19 pneumonia who is requiring hospitalization like the ASHA worker has reported that the SpO2 of the patient is falling less than 93, the respiratory rate is spiking more than 24, so you are planning to admit this guy, that would be acute respiratory alkalosis. But who would be a patient of chronic respiratory alkalosis, then I can say anxiety neurosis. I mean this guy is always breathing harder than what he normally should be and thereby the, the problems of this patient would be exemplified. So my objective of today's discussion was primarily to make you very clear about the Davenport diagram that I've highlighted. They can either simply mark out these scenarios as I showed to you in the very first slide that they can just give blanks like these and ask you to fill up whether it's going to be a metabolic acidosis. Now you are very well clear that point number B that I have highlighted is going to be a uh, acute respiratory acidosis whereas point number C is a chronic respiratory acidosis. Why? Because the carbon dioxide values in this case are definitely higher and the bicarb values will also be relatively higher so do practice this so that you are able to get this question spot on in a duration of about say uh, under a minute thank you so much for your patience and hearing me out